All right, welcome. This is AP Physics Workbook for Solutions for Unit 7, Torque and Rotations. Here we have Section 7.C, Rotational Energy. So here's the scenario. A solid sphere is initially at rest at the top of a tall, rough hill. It rolls down the hill and up the next hill. Okay, Angelica and Blake creates an energy chart for the sphere system for the time between points A and point B right here a and point b okay and then for each graph explain whether it is either correct or incorrect okay so before that we can look at some of our notes for this rotational kinetic energy first of all you should already know what the ug is that's gravitational potential okay all right so if you need a refresher on gravitational potential ug is defined as mass times gravity times the height Okay, there are two types of kinetic energy here. You have the rotation, which is one half, the rotational inertia times the angular velocity squared. This is how much it uh, spins, okay? This is the linear velocity, mass times velocity squared. This is going, uh, moving in a line, okay? Something like this. This is spinning in place, all right? So these are the two types of uh, energy, okay? So here you could look at an, an example of the total energy any between any point is defined by moving in a line, spinning, and this is just gravitational potential, okay? So this is like an MGH, all right? Okay, so let's take a look here, okay? You could pause the video if you would like uh, to do these, okay? I'm going to go one by one. So I said that Angelica's energy chart shows at the start of the ball has all gravitational potential right here. And at point B, the, it only has rotational kinetic energy. Angelica's graph is incorrect because at point B, it should have both rotational and translational kinetic energy. It should be both spinning and moving forward down the ramp. If there isn't any translational energy, that means the ball is just spinning in place like a top, which isn't in this case. Now for Blake. Blake's energy chart here shows that at the start, the ball has all gravitational potential. And at point B, the ball only has translational kinetic energy. Blake's graph is incorrect because at point B, he should have both rotational and kinetic energy, translational kinetic energy. It should be both spinning and moving forward down the ramp. The reason for the rotational kinetic energy is that the object is a sphere and the object is moving on a rough surface. A circular object moving on a non-frictional surface will rotate due to a torque caused by the frictional force. It says it right here, rough uh, surface okay rough hill okay that's the reason why a rotational should occur all right and let's do the last one let's see if Carlos is correct all right I said Carlos's graph is the only graph that is correct where it describes the object at point B as having both the rotational right here KR rotational kinetic energy and the translational kinetic energy Right. What that means is at point B, it should be spinning and moving forward. OK. All right. Part B. How would each of the chart in part A be different if the Earth was not part of this system? So part of this system is the ramp, the ball and Earth. OK. What happens when you take Earth out? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this chart. OK. And I'm bring it down here and we're going to use it for the answer. OK. So I wrote this, okay? If the Earth is not part of the system, there would be no initial gravitational potential energy because there would be no mass. Um, there would be a mass, but there's no gravitational field that would be causing the gravitational acceleration. So in reality, there should be no, okay? This should be gone. This should be gone. And this should be gone. Likewise, this is also gone, okay? This is how it would look like when there is no any part of the system. So in reality, you would see nothing in A, then it would be all B, right? But remember, this is the only one correct. 
how can you explain this? Okay. You would explain Carlos's explanation is that there would be a need for work to be done on the sphere ramp system. And that work that is being done is by the gravitational force. And it's doing work on the system is because it's on the outside. All right. So this is how it would look like if there would be no earth in the system. All right, let's do the next one. Part C. The sphere continues to roll on the track without slipping at point C. It leaves the track. At the sphere's highest point, will it be below or at the same height as point A? We can just draw a line here for point A. Okay. All right. I said, okay, will it reach this point? I would say the sphere will not be able to reach the same point as A because all the energy cannot get converted to all potential energy after leaving the ramp. Because right here, it was all potential energy, okay? It was all MGH. To reach this point, it would be all MGH, okay? I would say it wouldn't. The sphere is rotating as it leaves point C. So here's the sphere. It is both spinning and moving forward, right? Therefore, some of the energy will still be rotating energy. Since there is still kinetic rotational energy, the sphere cannot obtain all the energy required to go to the same point as point A. So if you grab the chart here, right? So this is what it's referring to. It will never reach all potential Again, it would never reach all potential because at the end, KT is going to, KT might go into potential, right? KT, you see how the KT went into the potential? This is the kinetic energy in the line goes all to potential. But at the end, there's still some rotation. The rotation cannot go back to the potential here, right? Because it's still, uh, because there was rotation caused right here, okay? Part D, the sphere is then taken to an, an, an identical shape ramp with now negligible friction and released from the same point. Is the sphere maximum height after leaving the track greater or less than as the height as it reached the rough track? Okay, ooh, I forgot to give you the answer here. And we said it was below, right? Yeah, um, it was below, okay. All right, so for this case, so here it says with negligible friction, okay? So this is the hard part. This is the part, the new part, okay? That means that the coefficient of friction is basically um, going to be zero, okay? Now, I want you to understand how friction uh, affects this, okay? Now, I'm going to bring up this demo, okay? Here, you see there's force of friction here? Okay, watch this, okay? So it rolls, it slides, then it starts rolling, okay? This is slide at a distance 5.43 because again, there's no coefficient of friction here. And then it starts rotating because th now there's friction, okay? Because I said it here. Now, let me erase this, but this time, let me run it again, but this time the coefficient is gonna be zero, all right? Erase trace, watch what happens to the ball. It doesn't rotate. Coefficient of friction is zero. Doesn't rotate. All right. Even if you change the object, so it doesn't matter. Doesn't rotate. It only rotates if there is what gravitational potential. Sorry, only if there is a coefficient of friction. Right. The wheel will rotate as well. The sphere will also rotate as well. But that's only because there is the coefficient of friction. All right. Why is that? Okay. So. Here's the notes for it if you would like a better definition. Without friction, there would be no opposite force to create the torque. The kind of torque uh, that is caused here um, is by the frictional force, and the frictional force is what's causing the torque. So imagine this as the center. This is the 
this is going to be R. This is going to be here, the force of friction. So therefore, there is going to be a torque this way, causing it to spin. Good? So in this case, will it spin? All right, so I wrote here that the sphere's maximum height of the new ramp will be greater than the previous ramp. Here's the previous ramp, okay? I'm going to just take this out. So this is before, and I'm going to give you the new one. The new one would look something, uh, let's see, the new one's going to be in green, okay? So then, uh, no, let's see purple. So the new one is going to be something uh, slightly under, but not all the way here. Wait, will it be? Oh, yeah, no, it would be right here. Right here, it's only moving forward, right? There is no spinning. So here, in this case, it went from U, right? So it went from gravitational potential. Down here, it was kinetic uh, rotation and kinetic translation. And here, it's all back to all U because it's not spinning, okay? Oh, actually, no. No, wait, hold on. There is no connect. There is no KR here. Because there is because mu is zero, mu is zero, so there isn't a kr. Okay, so I would say that the sphere's maximum height of the new ramp will be greater than the previous ramp. The new ramp has a uh, negligible friction, which means the ramp can be treated as a frictional surface. A sphere cannot rotate on a frictionless surface, therefore the object will only have translational kinetic energy, which is kinetic energy moving in a line. The entire sphere's gra gravitational potent energy right here is now converted to right here, which means that the sphere can go further than before. Good. All right. So there you go. Those are all your solutions and notes. Let me pause it at the notes if you would like it. Here's the energy, rotation, and kinetic. And here should be the explanation on how the, if there is no more Earth in this system, then these are the notes on why friction causes an object to rotate. All right, there you go.